what's up youtube capital g here okay so i'm talking hand traps in this video and i'm talking about why specifically right now in this format i think that they suck let me specify that i'm talking about max c and effect veiler uh, i guess you could throw dd crow in there but outside of piper i'm not really sure what runs that i'm not talking about gores and tragodia because i still feel like those are necessary in decks that run you know basic minimal traps i'm talking like two traps no traps stuff like that decks like chaos dragons frog monarchs you know lancer frogs that's where those are considered battle interrupters to where those can you know decide whether you live or die i mean you can max see your opponent and they just decide i'm still going for it and you end up losing and it's not very fun <clears throat> here are some of the reasons why i don't believe hand traps are essential right now if you're running a conventional trap lineup you look at the straight up facts just facts right now the result of your most recent YCS and this is starting to be a trend not a blip you look at the winner in his insector decks no max C no effect Valor look at the third place wind up no max C no effect Valor look at all the macro rabbits that top there were five Dino rabbit decks that top uh, 32 that event no max C's no Valors because you know why would they not only does it conflict with macro cosmos but Dino rabbit is that the it has the ability to make Doka and also you know Phoenix chain is obviously a prevalent card in the deck too and it's we're, we're we're reaching a point where it's not like last format where in last format every single deck had such an overwhelmingly powerful turn one play whether it be you know especially pre-priority removal rabbit you know they could just summon the rabbit banish and it's like you couldn't even affect Valor. you had windups where they could pick apart half your hand and then you had a deck like uh in sectors where you know they were ultra consistent with the three dragonfly three hornets and all of those decks you know, with the exception of windup, the consistency has either been hit or the first turn plays aren't that explosive anymore. You look at some of your matchups, and this is one of the reasons I'm really down on hand traps. You know, you look at, yeah, hand traps are absolutely phenomenal against a deck like windup where all their monsters are very little and they have to exceed to get very big. But against a deck like Dino Rabbit, the, the way that the deck is played has changed. I mean, it's very conceivable for your opponent to just simply, you know, Summon Sabersaurus and try and control with that, you know, and just win the game. Occasionally making like it. Like, it's not all make either hit rabbit or bust anymore. You look at other matchups like Mermills and, uh, you know, Mermills and Cash Dragons. Cash Dragons, hand traps are, are absolutely horrible against because all their big summons are inherent. So it's not really, you're, you're never really sure when to max C. Yeah, Effect Veiler is great against, you know, cards like Tour Guide, but I, I don't think that you should be main decking you know, four copies of these count or these hand traps when they might hit four good cards out of the deck. I mean, look at Macro Rabbit. What in the deck do you want to max C and Valor? Like Rabbit and Tour Guide. That's four cards out of 40. That's only 10% of the deck. So you're dedicating spots for 10% of somebody's deck, you know. And yeah, you can occasionally, like you can max C or Valor when your opponent, you know, act or when your opponent swings with like Gwyber or something or pre-swinging with Gwyber. But what does that really do? I mean, that doesn't really accomplish anything. Uh, chances are, if they don't, you know, uh, they don't take that opportunity to summon another guy, but you're just going to go neg one. Against a deck like Atlanteans, you know, it's really diva or bust. I mean, Maxi has some optimal uses because you can chain it to Abyss Spear. You can chain it when they reveal the Megalo. You can chain it to Diva. But chances are you're not going to go more than, you know, you're not going to go more than just a break even. And considering Effect Veiler doesn't stop something like Genix Undying, it's like, what are you really doing? Uh, one of my biggest reasons why I despise hand traps right now, the two main ones, is they can't be used offensively. Like, there's no way to effectively use a Fet Veiler offensively, or, I mean, Max C for that, for the most point. Uh, if you look at cards that could replace hand traps that most people are hesitant to do because you have to put them on the field, cards like Forbidden Lance, Fiendish Chain, and Compose, all of those cards can be used offensively. For instance, you know, uh, you attack your opponent, they activate Mirror Force, Chain Forbidden Lance to your monster, it doesn't die, and it can't be affected by any other spells or traps. So it's going to be relatively difficult to stop that attack. A card like Phoenix Chain, it can be used offensively. Your opponent has a Trigodio on board, they have a Spirit Reaper on board, attack, they have no response to the attack declaration, you activate Phoenix Chain, there is no replay, that monster will probably die. You know, Compose Evac Device, your opponent has monsters on the field, you uh, simply activate Compose and attack without having to attack the monster, potentially attacking for game. This is one of the huge benefits. Uh, a second thing is the whole macro defender element. And this, it can't be ignored. I understand that it's only one deck, but you have to also look at the amount of decks that are probably going to start siding defender, potentially in sectors and windups. And you can't activate, you can't resolve these hand traps while your opponent has those cards on the field. So it's like, 
I potentially have a dead card for the entire game versus if I was running more conventional traps, I'd be able to just, you know, effectively use those to potentially save me a turn or to, to get rid of something. It's also worth uh, mentioning hand traps don't remove monsters like they they don't they don't offer monster removals like hand traps will never help you win. They'll just help you not lose or I'll say seldomly like when you have a fat veiler. If, if you have board presence and you have the Veiler the whole time, it's like, yeah, that's good. It kind of feels like insurance on your card. Like, you hope you don't need it, but when you do need it, it's there. You know what I mean? But Effect Veiler is it's not a card that's ever going to be proactive. You know what I mean? If you need to get over another monster, Effect Veiler is not going to do that. And don't give me the whole, oh, well, you can exceed or you can use it for a sink. Come on, please. Let's, let's not debate just straight up stupid things. Um, <clears throat> another thing that, that Hand Traps... Uh, that I don't like about hand traps is they they basically let your opponent dictate the terms. You, you know what I mean? Like, let's say you need that extra monster to push for game. The hand trap isn't going to do anything. All it does is sit in your hand and make sure that at the opportune time, you don't lose any type of uh, field presence or you can somewhat recover. Like, I guess they're just recovery cards. Uh, they're horrible top decks. I said that in a video a while ago. Now, I won't put too much on that. Because you can, there are multitudes of cards that you can say are horrible top decks. Solemn Warning's horrible if you're under 2,000. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Monster Reborn is horrible if your opponent has macro on the field. Or if you're playing macro, Rabbit, and you top deck Monster Reborn, but you've had macro since turn one and there's nothing in the graveyards. Yeah, but I, I just look at, um, I, I look at, uh, at, at hand traps right now and I think so many people are hesitant to get away from them because of the old heavy storm argument. Well, you know, oh, well, they can't heavy storm my fat veiler. Yeah, that's good and everything, but you also have to remember, heavy storm is one card out of 40. You know, is it really worth that one opportunity or that one situation where they have the heavy storm and they can't kill or they do happen to kill your evac that you set versus the other situations where, you know, your monster gets run over by some random vanilla because you can't evac it or because you can't ha play your Forbidden Lance, or your monster ends up dying and you have a Fet Veil in your hand, and it's like, what does that do? So I look at decks like Macro Rabbit, or even Conventional Rabbit, I don't understand why you'd run that deck now, but I look at decks like Dino Rabbit, Insectors, Windups, and I'm like, why do, or Geargia, I'm like, why do these decks need hand traps anymore? It, it's, it's better, just from a straight up statistical standpoint, to simply play more multiple, um, play more utility cards, Cards that have multiple uses, cards like Phoenix Chain, Evac, Forbidden Lance, that can be used in different situations, you know? There's only one way to play Effect Veiler. You can play Forbidden Lance a bunch of different ways. You can activate you can activate Phoenix Chain on both players' turns. You can activate Phoenix Chain to stop an attack. And the biggest reason is that last thing I just stated, attack stoppers. Evac, Phoenix Chain, Forbidden Lance, they can potentially be effects they can potentially be attack stoppers when you're playing matches where you know that hand traps are not going to be optimal these cards might not be optimal too but the fact that they can be used as multi-purpose cards are what make them shine over hand traps let's say you're playing against dark world dark world is not a effect heavy deck so you obviously know effect veiler is not going to do much you could obviously argue that phoenix chain wouldn't do much but phoenix chain has the ability to stop an attack which a fat veiler and maxi do not have so that one attack stop, that could be the difference between you top decking a monster born and, and ending up winning or you potentially losing the game because you had an effect veiler and it's like, uh, what does this do? You know what I mean? It just gets run over and then I lose the game. So <clears throat> let me know what you guys think of this. Let me know what you guys think of hand traps right now. Again, I'm not saying that, you know, nobody should run them, but I think that if you're running a deck with conventional traps, you don't need hand traps right now because of all the reasons that I mentioned. I believe if, if you're running decks with very minimal traps, like Prophecy or uh, a deck like Mermills, you know, cards like Trigodia are pretty much all you need. Like, cards, it's it's not worth risking either losing because your opponent has a macro or a defissure, having those cards dead, or them just not being optimal because your opponent is not committing to the special summon. They're not committing to heavy effects and stuff like that. So, let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching. As always, talk to you later.